CRUD operations in Spire Store with Swift UI can be cumbersome due to the lack of straightforward APIs for real-time updates, error handling, and data structuring. Unlike core data, Firestore requires manual document fetching, decoding, and synchronization, often leading to boilerplate code and complex async handling. This video is the ultimate guide because it simplifies the entire process, covering setup, best practices, and efficient data management, so you can focus on building great apps without the hassle of debugging Firestore things. Make sure to check out the link in the description for my super sale where you can get all of my products and join Swift UI Camp. The link is down in the description. So today we are going to talk about how to use Firebase's Firestore in your project. And this will be a two part series again, and it's going to be linked to uh, my previous series on authentication with sign in with Apple and Firebase. So make sure to check out the link in the description for the playlist too, where you can just go through uh, uh, all of them. So you get to land on this project. This is the sign in with uh, uh, Apple demo project. And basically we just signed in uh, with Apple and uh, we saved our profile under, right over here, under the profiles collection. Basically that's it. Uh, go ahead and check out the link in the description if you are interested in how we did that. But today we are going to go even further. This has been added by the authentication system that we built, but we also want to learn how to add in some new elements into a new collection, some new documents. And what I'm going to do is uh, save some cards. In this video, I'm going to create the model. And in the next one, we are going to just simply um, use Firebase's, you know, the CRUD uh, stuff. Okay, so uh, let's create a new file. Oh, by the way, if you are joining from the previous episode, what I did here is just created a cards view. We are going to go through that uh, intensively in this uh, tutorial, these two tutorials, added it when we are authenticated and also created a profile view where I just moved all of the logout functionality um, that we had on the content view. And... Uh, also, on the profile, we are going to fetch our profile. We are going to get it there too. So let's create a card, a new uh, empty file, and this will be called card. Okay, so this will be a card, and we are going to import Swift UI. And uh, yeah, let's also import Firestore, and then let's create our struct. Now, we also want to make this identifiable and equatable and all of that stuff. We also want to add some created add and updated add date and store the user ID. Now, there's an easy way of handling uh, Firestore CRUD operations inside your SwiftUI project. And that is, and you guessed it, this is my first tab right over here, the third tab. That is Firestore collection. Go ahead and check it out. It's on github.com slash rebeloper slash firestore collection and let's just add this into our project i'm just going to copy the link out go back to xcode and then add it as a new dependency let's paste it over there and then add the package current version is 1.0.4 as of this tutorial. If there are any suggestions, just let me know in the comments down below. I will be happily, uh, uh, I'd be happy to uh, review them and uh, hopefully add them to uh, this new uh, project. So Firestore collection, uh, add to target, yes, add a dependency. And now we can just add, uh, rather import, let's import Firestore collection. Okay, so what we can do with the Firestore collection uh, library is just adhere the card to our Firestoreable uh, protocol. Now, what is this Firestoreable protocol? Let's just jump to definition. So uh, it is identifiable, codable, equatable, and sendable. And then we have this Firestore modelable, which basically is just making sure that we have a created at timestamp, an updated at timestamp, and a user ID. So basically that's our Firestoreable. That's why it's complaining right over here. So let's add our required elements right over here. 
iOS developers, this is your chance. I'm running a sale where you get all my SwiftUI products bundled together for a massive 91% off. And that's not all. SwiftUI Camp is included. This four week live bootcamp on Zoom will take you from coder to SwiftUI experts starting March the 3rd. The total value, $2,280, but for a limited time, it's yours for $199. Don't miss out on this insane deal. Grab it now. The link is in the description. First of all, we uh, need to uh, adhere to the identifiable, which needs an ID. And uh, a Firebase Firestore uh, gives us a really nice um, uh, property wrapper that is the at document ID property wrapper and uh, var ID of type optional string. This is how uh, it should be done. Okay, so that's that. But Firestoreable is also sendable. And you can see stored property ID, sendable look confirmed. So it's basically not conforming to our sendable requirement. Document ID still does not conform to that. So we need to add a pre-concurrency uh, macro right over here. Uh, let's just fix that under the Firebase Firestore. Now, after the Firebase team is just going to make our document ID sendable, then you can just simply remove this part. Okay, so that's uh, the identifiable requirement. Next up, let's add a created, and we are going to add also a server timestamp. So add server timestamp var created at, and it's not going to be a date, it's just going to be a timestamp. That's why, of course, we imported the Firebase Firestore too. And this has to be optional. Okay, and then let's duplicate this and let's name this updated at. Okay, let's remove this part. And finally, we need to set up a user ID, var user ID of type string, and let's give it a default value of empty string. Okay, so now uh, the errors should go away, really nice. Now, what is this server timestamp uh, property wrapper? Well, it's really nice. If you are going to give the value of created that or updated that, whatever you choose, you give it nil, then it's just going to save the server timestamp on the server when it, uh, the data arrives on the server. This is really, really nice and it handles dates really, really well. If you give it a, a timestamp with a date, then it's just going to use that one. Now, uh, Firestore Collection heavily uses when we are updating and saving and all of that stuff, the server timestamp. That's uh, why I just added the created it and updated it. Go ahead and check out the next video for more details on this. Okay, so this is these two are optional, which I don't really like. The ID, we're not going to use it in our views, but maybe the created it and updated that we are going to use them. So what I usually do is just uh, create another variable of uh, updated uh, or created, let's start with that, created date. Uh, and that will be of type date because, you know, um, Swift usually handles date and not timestamps. And uh, also, yeah, we can just unwrap it right over here. So what are we going to add over here? Created at uh, question mark because it's optional dot date value. We are going to get its date value. Otherwise, use the current date. So that's how we are uh, getting the optionals out of the way and also getting a date and not the timestamp. So in our project, we are not going to use the created at, we are going to use the created date. The same goes for our updated date. So let's just go for updated date and then we are going to choose the updated at date value or the current date value. Okay, so um, those are the required ones, but also I want to have something more special. I want to have uh, custom properties and let's just add them right over here. I'm just going to add one, but you may add as many as you'd like. So I'm going to create a title, var title of type string. Okay, I'm not going to add in any default values because I'm just going to create an initializer in it, uh, yeah, this will be a custom one, so I'm not going to use uh, the one with the decoder encoder. In just a second, we are going to get uh, there too. So title of type string, and I'm going to give a default value right over here. So then self 
uh, dot title equals title. So in the initializer, I'm giving a default value, so I can initialize these uh, models real quickly with the default values. Again, if you add in more properties, then set the properties default values in the initializer. Okay, so that's great. But uh, what about uh, when we are encoding and decoding this? Now, Firebase already has a built-in Firestore decodable and encodable, but I want to tweak this because, for example, if the title is missing or it's corrupted or anything like that, then it's just going to default of not decoding it. And that's what, not what we want. So let's fix that. And uh, we are going to do that by providing our decoder and encoder too. And for that, we need some coding keys. Uh, after the init, uh, init, let's just create an enum uh, coding keys. Um, it could be string or just coding key. That's fine. I'm just going to remove the string values because I'm not going to give default values or you know, just make sure that uh, on the server there are other names you know, just check out my uh, other tutorials about models, how to create these coding keys. Uh, there will be a case of ID and then created it, updated, user ID and title. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm adding in the case of ID because uh, I'm not going to store the ID because of the document ID property wrapper. This is really, really nice. But I want to add it in in the encoding and in decoding part. Okay, so those are my coding keys. And of course, yeah, we have all of the other ones. And then let's create our decoder. So in it, in it, and then from decoder, that's fine. Oh. Let's double check because yeah, it just added all of this. So we want to have a container with the coding keys. That's fine. And then we want to have to we want to decode document ID that is of type string for the key ID. That's really nice. And as you can see, it just goes for the underscore ID because we have we want to access the wrapped value of that property wrapper. Okay, created that same thing. Let me just have some more space over here so we can see it better. Created that same thing. It's a server timestamp of time timestamp for the key of created that. Updated that. User ID is a string and the title is also a string. Really nice. Okay, so what happens if any of uh, the values are missing? Now the ID will be there. Uh, and we are going to generate it with the document ID property wrapper. So we don't have to worry about that not being on the server. It will not be on the server. But what about this created that and updated that? Well, uh, if it's missing, we are going to not decode it because then it's just going to fail. We are going to decode if present. Okay, so now we are going to provide a default value. So two question marks. I'm just going to paste this in here. Server timestamp with a wrap value, timestamp dot now. Basically, it's just going to be now. Okay, uh, let's do the same for the updated at. So decode if present, and then the default value, server timestamp. And then the user ID, again, decode if present, decode if present. And this is a string, so the default value should be an empty one. And the same goes for the title. The code, if present, default value. There we go. So now we make sure that if any of these values are missing from our server, then it will just go for the default values. Really nice. But we still need to encode the stuff so we can send it away. So there is our encoder. So encode two, there we go. And it's suggesting uh, uh, really good stuff, basically. All I'm going to do is just have encode if present. Again, if it's missing, then we want to uh, make sure that it's not encoding it. There we go. And it's just fine. You know, AI is just uh, really nice at these things nowadays. Great. So this is how you are going to create your models from now on. We are going to create another model in the next episode, but that's a little bit different. And make sure that you stay tuned because in that one, we are also going to do the Firestore CRUD operations. And if you did like this tutorial, go ahead and check out my super sale. The link is down in the description.